gamers, thank you for taking some precious time away from Elden Ring Shadow of the Earth Tree to watch this video. We know you'd rather be playing the game, but honestly, you're kind of getting wrecked by Rolana fam, so you probably could use a break anyways. We'll be sure to make it worth your while because this is the June monthly update, which means we're here to talk about all the showcases that happened a couple weeks prior. If you're trying to keep up with all the new announcements, then you've come to the right place, where we talk about all the co-op games that came out last month, what co-op games are coming out in the next month, and any co-op news in between. We've got a stacked episode, so let's get started. We're starting off with none other than Destiny 2's final major planned expansion, The Final Shape. Who else is shocked to see this release to pretty much universal acclaim, with it landing at a 92 from critics and a very positive 82% from users on Steam? After Lightfall knocked the wind out of Witch Queen's sails, we had written off the final shape, but the reviews once again brought us home to the Traveler. Our thoughts? This is great. The new class is a ton of fun. Bungie is just flexing in terms of art direction, and the writing is on a whole other level compared to previous outings. This simply can't be the same team that wrote Lightfall, I refuse to believe that. It's still an absolute mess for lapsed players and new players, but we had a good time and are glad to see Destiny land in a positive place 10 years later. I want to talk about Wayfinder's re-release because it's really an interesting story. Here's the TLDR. Wayfinder released last August as a free-to-play action RPG. You could play with up to three players with larger zones accommodating 30 to 40 players, making it a bit of an MMORPG light. Any positive sentiment was drowned out due to the deserved backlash it garnered with massive server issues. Almost a year later, after the publisher closed and gave the devs the right to the IP, the team re-released Wayfinder as a 1-3 player peer-to-peer -peer online co-op game. They massively rehauled every system to make it work, including removing monetization entirely and opting for a paid release. It is no longer an MMORPG light. Right now it's in early access on PC and PS5 and will be in 1.0 on both those platforms plus Xbox come this fall. How is it going you may ask? Well on Steam its recent review rating is up to an 82% very positive compared to its overall 49% mixed. Remember that recent reviews go back as far as 28 days so that score mostly reflects the changes that have happened. All of that to say that Wayfinder went from a certain flop to something worth putting on your radar come this fall I certainly know that I am. We'll do a short speed round to cover some smaller titles before we hit the big one of the month. Go Go Town is a title we've mentioned a few times here. It's a cozy four-player local co-op town simulator with a nicely polished art style. It came out in early access on the 18th, meaning we don't have critic reviews, but it's got a very positive 91% from 500 plus Steam reviews. It should be out in 1.0 next fall, which probably means it'll come to consoles around that time too. If you prefer your cozy co-op life sims in a simpler top-down 2D art style, look no further than Ever After Falls. It was released on the 20th to all the consoles and included two-player local co-op. It only has a little over 50 user ratings as of writing, but that has it nicely placed at a 92% very positive. Frogun Encore is a sequel to the indie darling Frogun, an N64-style platformer you can play entirely in local co-op. Right now, it only has a few Steam reviews, but they're all positive, so it might be worth a try if this looks like your jam. And the last game that I want to quickly add in is Super Monkey Ball Banana Rumble, which landed at a solid 75 from critics. The general sentiment is that this is finally a positive new entry in the series, and with tons of multiplayer options, it's a win for Sega. Alright, with the speed round out of the way, we can finally talk about Shadow of the Erd Tree. As of writing, it is the highest rated DLC ever released, edging out The Witcher with a mighty 94. Of course, if you've been on the internet for more than 5 minutes, you've also heard complaints about difficulty. Not sure if this is a hot take, but honestly, I think it's all totally overblown. If you just bring in your Mimic tier, I'd argue most boss fights only take a few tries, at least in my experience, excluding the final boss of course too. I'd actually say the misbalance is in co-op, where Gabe and I have found that some of the boss health pools grow dramatically. That's been my only complaint. For instance, this boss fight here that you're watching is against the Death Knight, and it took me and my Mimic tier maybe a little bit over a minute, whereas it took Gabe and I like 8 plus minutes. That's what I call imbalance. 
But as you get more shadow tree fragments, I feel like it slowly starts to even balance itself in the co-op. So even that kind of alleviates itself over time. On the subject of co-op though, it's important to note that the Seamless mod just got updated to include the DLC, but if you do plan to play it that way, keep in mind that it's fresh out the oven, so it might be a little bit buggy. If you need help setting that up, check out our how-to guide. So overall, I think that Erdtree is fantastic. It's probably going to be my favorite game of the year, and if you're into Elden Ring or the Souls games or whatever, you're kidding yourself if you're not giving this a shot just because some people say it's too hard. So July has some really interesting releases. Sure, half of them are co-op shooters, but the rest couldn't be more different, so let's take a look. First up is The First Descendant. This is a four-player online co-op free-to-play third-person looter shooter. The game has been on our radar for a while as it's gotten plenty of flashy Unreal Engine 5 trailers. Even so, I'm still not sure what to make of it. This is definitely one to wait for reviews for and luckily we don't have to wait long as it's coming out on July 2nd for all consoles bar the Switch. Another upcoming free-to-play title is Sendless Zone Zero. Normally, we're pretty skeptical of free-to-play models, but if there's any studio that has cracked the code on delivering a solid free-to-play experience, it's MiHoYo. This one looks to focus on slick hack and slash combat, featuring a large cast of characters and three-player online co-op. Again, I'm curious how this one will be received. We'll hear more on July 4th when the game comes to PS5, iOS, and PC. Launching the following week is Once Human, a four-player online co-op open-world survival title. This game is packing a lot of features from base building, survival mechanics, looter shooter, and even raids. It's always struck me as a super ambitious game, so we'll see if it all comes together when Once Human launches on July 9th exclusively on PC. Honestly, the game we're most excited about is Flock, which got a surprise release date recently and is now launching on July 16th. This is a four-player online co-op game where you fly around a really cool setting and collect these bird-like creatures, maybe find some treasures, and yeah, I think that's pretty much all you do. The art style looks awesome, and overall, it simply looks very unique. We'll definitely be checking this one out when it comes to PC, Xbox, and PlayStation consoles. Another game coming out on the Sid scenes is Evil v Evil, a vampire co-op shooter because when fangs can't get the job done, you just gotta pull out the AR. The game features 3 player online co-op and it's launching on all platforms bar the Switch. Okay, so listen, we hear you. We haven't given Earth's Defense Force 6 much love on this monthly series, but we're here to make up for that now that the game is launching on July 25th. At long last, this sequel will finally be available outside Japan and features four-player online co-op as you and your mates defend Earth from all manner of insane giant enemies. It looks like a total blast, so keep an eye out for this when it launches on PS5 and PC towards the end of July. Hey friends, I wanted to interrupt the show for a quick pitch on our Patreon. We've been working on it for six months and have made a huge update that we want to inform you guys about. We've decided to go from three packages to just two and reduce the prices to only $3 and a $1 tier. Not only that, but each tier is receiving more content and ways to interact with the channel, like the $3 tier getting access to our exclusive 10% off merch code and our new series Play and Banter, where we talk about the games we're playing and give you some impressions before we're able to put out a dedicated video. And our $1 tier is gaining access to voting rights on polls for video subjects and game selections. Patreon is just one way you can help support all the hard work Gabe and I do to run this channel, so thank you to everyone who's already over there and to anyone considering it. Now back to the show. Finally, we've arrived at our packed news section. There's so much news from these showcases, guys, so we'll try to keep it brief. As always, let's start with any updates on release titles. After being delisted while embroiled in some crazy legal drama, Dark and Darker is back on Steam. This is a three-player online co-op PvEVP dungeon crawler that we got to try before it went away. It was actually a ton of fun, and now it's back as a free-to-play title, so check it out if it piques your interest. Announced at Summer Game Fest, Power World got its first major expansion with the Sakurajima update which launched on June 27th. The new update features a whole new island, new pals, a new faction, and much more. I know plenty of people are still playing this game, so happy they got a ton of content to keep them busy. Moving on to the Devolver Direct, and we got a pretty sick announcement with Cult of the Lamb getting a surprise local co-op mode via its Unholy Alliance update on August 12th. This is really freaking cool. Cult of the Lamb was one of my favorite games from 2022, and I know for a fact a two-player co-op mode is going to make it even better. 
The future game show delivers some great news for any fans of Starship Troopers Extermination out there as the game is finally launching onto 1.0 on October 11th. This is a 16 player co-op shooter very similar to Helldivers 2, so if you're looking for something similar, check this out. The Xbox Showcase was arguably the best showcase and with it we got a new look at Sea of Thieves 13 seasonal update. This season is notable for letting players play as the villain for the first time which honestly sounds like the best way to get me into your game. The new update will be hitting the game on July 25th. With the game having launched on PS5 a couple months prior it really seems like a great time to jump into Sea of Thieves. The Xbox Showcase also gave us a new look at the upcoming Vessel of Hatred expansion for Diablo 4. It was only a cinematic trailer, but man, it got both of us pretty hyped. The story and presentation of Diablo 4 was always a big highlight for us, and to see this update is focusing on Nyrell sounds awesome. We also got a release date for the update now slated for October 8th. Another game getting a sizable update is Fallout 76 with the Skyline Valley expansion. The new update features the first new map expansion to the game, alongside some new storylines, weapons, and for the first time ever, you'll be able to play as a ghoul, but not for some time next year. The update went live a couple days after being announced, which I'm sure for you 76ers, that's gotta be pretty hyped. The annual Ubisoft Forward went as suspected, news on Assassin's Creed, and lots of Just Dance. But we also got a new look at Avatar Frontiers of Pandora's upcoming DLC, The Skybreaker. This new update adds a new area called the Heart of Plains, along with new story quests, enemy types, and some new strongholds to take on. Having played this one ourselves, we can say it's a lot better than we thought it would be, and there's part of me that wants to dive back into it when the Skybreaker DLC launches on July. 16th. Yacht Club, developers of Mina and Shovel Knight held their very own direct where they highlighted the new Ultimate Edition of Shovel Knight which adds a new online co-op mode where before it was only local co-op. Andrew actually played this with his college roommate and they both loved it so check out the online co-op mode if you never got into Shovel Knight before. Lastly, let's shout about the big Nintendo Direct which gave us some news on Disney Illusion Island. The game got a shadow drop update called The Mystery in Monoth which looks to add some new collectibles as you help this funny looking dolphin detective character. We love to see it, Disney Illusion Island is a great game so we're very happy to see it get a free update. So we didn't get a new Donkey Kong game, but an HD port will have to do as Donkey Kong Country Returns HD got announced as a January 16th release date for next year. This is a total classic and you can play it via local co-op as both the Big Kong and Diddy Kong throughout the entirety of the game. We got a new update to Nintendo's subscription service which now includes The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past 4 Swords. What's notable about this is that the game now supports online co-op. So if you never got a chance to play this classic, here's the best way to revisit it. And before I hand over the mic, we got one isolated update for Enshrouded, but it's a pretty big one. The open world survival co-op game got a new update titled Melodies of the Mire, which adds a new Black Mire area, musical instruments, transmog, and much more. One notable update for co-op is the option for player-based quest progression, letting you complete quests individually while in multiplayer, so you don't have to miss out on anything. This was a widely requested feature, so we're very happy to see the developer address something like this so quickly. All right, friends, let's keep this Summer Games Fest train rolling with updates on the upcoming titles. Summer Games Fest kicked off in spirit at the PlayStation State of Play, where we saw a few co-op titles like Path of Exile 2. We now have the release window of late 2024 for its early access, and it seems to me like that'll be available on PC, Xbox, and PlayStation consoles. This isn't necessarily unprecedented, but it is really rare to get early access titles released on PlayStation consoles. We also got many important details like local couch co-op, cross progression, and cross saves. Everything you'd want and expect. It's looking excellent, and while it is tempting, I'll save the We Got Diablo 4 at Home joke for my inner circle because it'll probably get the comment section a little bit too ramped up here. Monster Hunter Wilds got a gameplay trailer both here and at Summer Game Fest, so we'll talk about it now while it's front of mind. 
guess what? It's Monster Hunter and it looks fantastic. It's going for a much more grounded look and ramping up all of those environmental details that we love from Monster Hunter Worlds. But that's not shade at Rise. It's also clearly drawing inspiration from the mountain system introduced there. Basically, this is combining the best of both of its predecessors into an experience that will surely top my personal hype charts next year. And that's with the release of a brand new Nintendo console and GTA 6. A showcase you might not have tuned into but had plenty of worthy small titles was the OTK Games Expo, and we got a gameplay overview and early access release date for Atomic Picnic. It's a third person roguelike co-op shooter that looks like fun even if I find the art style a little visually distracting. You've got the right systems in place for a solid cooperative title though, different characters, weapons, abilities, and in-run augmentations to choose from. Consider wishlisting it if that sounds up your alley. We also got a gameplay trailer for the recently announced Tim Tim Swarm. You might have heard of this through the backlash many players are having with the developers dropping the original Tim Tim's development despite some promised features never seeing the light of day. But looking past that, the idea of a Pokemon themed vampire survivors with 3 player online co-op works in my head and I'm sure it did with the developers too. Expect to see this release around quarter 3 of this year. Moving back to Summer Games Fest, we got a release date for Once Human, but Gabe has already covered that one in the upcoming games. The same goes for The First Ascendant, and also received its early July release date in this showcase. Very interested to see how both of these games score, I haven't loved their rollout footage up to launch. Luckily we won't have to wait too long, it might already be out today. The last co-op release date, or really window, that we got during Summer Games Fest was for Hyper Light Breaker. The early access period is supposed to open in late summer, aka August, so be sure to mark your calendars. Unlike those last two titles, this is one that I can see Gabe and I put a ton of time into. Finally, we can start to cover the Guerrilla Collective Showcase. Ukulele was developer Playtonic Games' way of saying, fine, we'll just make a modern Banjo-Kazooie ourselves." back in 2017. Now, seven years later, we are getting a robust remaster for PC and some unspecified platforms. You might remember this does have local co-op, but it's the Mario Galaxy kind where someone else can just pick up minor collectibles while they're sitting next to you on the couch. It was really just meant for a way for kids to join in on the fun at most. Kyborg, a fast-paced action roguelike with brutal hand-to-hand -hand combat, got a gameplay overview trailer. It showed off how your choices during a run will change up your playstyle. What it didn't show is that it also will have local co-op. No release date as of right now, so be sure to wishlist it on Steam. Evil v Evil got a cinematic trailer with its July 16th release date, but Gabe talked about the details in our upcoming game section. Let's keep going. Storm Edge is a beautifully pixelated action roguelite with local co-op coming to Steam early access sometime in the next few months, and we got another gameplay trailer here. Not our first look at the title, but certainly one to wishlist to keep updated in the lead up to launch. And finally, we also got that Frogun Encore release date during this showcase, but seeing as it's already out and we've talked about it, it's time to move on to even more news we got out of Xbox's showcase. Xbox released State of Decay 3 back out of the vault during their showing just to remind us that yes, it is being worked on. It was mostly a cinematic trailer with what looked like gameplay, maybe? We got most of our co-op centric details from the Xbox Wire blog post where developer Undead Labs revealed they've been working with Obsidian's Grounded team to perfect their shared world feature for more flexible online play. Love to hear that they're really emphasizing the co-op, and despite there still not being a release date, it's pushed State of Gate 3 a little higher up on my personal wish list. The only other news bit on unreleased titles we got from Xbox was from Mecha Break, a title that feels like it's been showing up everywhere these days. More gameplay and customization was shown, but we also received a release window at the end for 2025 and a beta coming to Xbox consoles and PC this August. Very excited for this one, Gabe and I have been dying for a proper cooperative mech game in the wake of Armored Core's revival. PC Gaming Show returned to Summer Games Fest for their 10th anniversary with their usual silly antics. This is where Streets of Rogue 2 got its early access release date of August 14th. We've heard about all the love for the original in our comments section in the past, so that release date just around the corner is good news for all. The first proper gameplay was shown off here for Killing Floor 3, and it's as gory and gut-wrenching as you'd expect. If you're a Horde shooter fan, keep an eye out for more details on that early 2025 release window. After two whole years in early access, Core Keeper is finally coming into 1.0 next month on the 27th with a console launch for Xbox, PlayStation, and the Switch. 
This has always had a really positive player base on Steam, so if you like the idea of an 8 player mining sandbox adventure, add the date to your calendar because it's time to finally hop in. Windblown got a developer narrated trailer during the PC game showcase talking about the main dash mechanic and that the game will be arriving later this year into early access. This is from the Dead Cells creator, so I'd highly suggest a wish list while it's front of mind. The last showcase to mention during this segment was Nintendo's Direct, where we saw one of the worst presentations for a game I think I've ever seen. I'm talking about the Funko Fusion release date trailer. This game already seemed like an odd choice, but then to see it in action on the Switch, it was enough to make me grab a bucket. Somehow, someway, this is arriving September 13th to all the platforms, and dear god let it look better than this. I can barely even get through this segment. Two more quick things to mention that didn't come from a showcase, we are unfortunately getting a delay on Little Nightmares 3 into 2025. Best of luck to the team, we'll circle back to you guys in January. And we also got a 6 minute overview trailer for Space Marines 2, a certified goatee contender in my books. Not that I needed more convincing or you did either, but give this a watch, you can thank me later. And lastly, let's cover all the new exciting game announcements from SGF and beyond. SGF season really started with the PlayStation State of Play, which was kind of just okay, but we did get the announcement of Ballad of Antara. This is a free-to-play Souls-like featuring three-player online co-op and a narrative-led campaign. It's hard what to make of this exactly from just one trailer, and of course, the whole free-to-play of it all is hard to reconcile with what we're looking at, but we're excited to hear more. It got a 2025 release window, so hopefully we get more gameplay soon. Like Andrew said earlier, the OTK Games Expo had plenty of hidden gems and one of my personal favorites from this whole showcase season was Haunted Paws. This is a cozy co-op horror game featuring two puppies looking for their owner in a haunted mansion. It's built from the ground up as a co-op title so you can expect a lot of neat co-op puzzle gameplay. And again, it's built as a cozy horror game which is a funny juxtaposition that I'm totally in for. No release window yet, so be sure to add this to your wishlist on Steam if it piques your interest. Out of all the showcases, Jeff Keighley really brought the goods, at least in terms of co-op titles, starting with LEGO Horizon Adventures. Yeah, you heard that right, we're getting a LEGO game featuring Aloy and the World of Horizon. I think we're all thinking the same thing here, this feels a little random. But looking at the gameplay, I honestly think it looks like a ton of fun. The game features two player co-op both local and online, and it's coming to all consoles, yes including the Switch, this holiday season. No More Room in Hell was another big highlight for me, as the more I look into this game, the more amazing it sounds. This is an 8 player online co-op survival zombie game with a permadeath feature, meaning when you die, it's over and you have to make a new character. Unlike the first game, this is being developed by Torn Banner Studios, makers of the Chivalry franchise, which bodes extremely well for the melee combat of the game. The game is launching onto early access on Steam this Halloween, and yeah, I could couldn't be more excited for it. You ever wonder why Hogwarts Legacy didn't feature Quidditch? Well, I think we know why now. This is Harry Potter Quidditch Champions, a full-fledged Quidditch game featuring 4-player online co-op. It looks interesting, I don't know if a live service Quidditch game has a chance to survive, but it is coming to PlayStation Plus for free while also coming to all consoles on September 3rd. Cuffbus was one of the more memorable announcements from SGF. This is from the same solo developer that created the beautifully demented Choo Choo Charles, but where that was a single player horror game, this is very different as it's a 20 player online co-op prison escape simulator. It looks insanely chaotic with multiple routes, proximity chat, and even the chance to help or betray your friends. I think this one is primed to blow up when it comes out sometime next year. The Power Rangers are getting the Shredder's Revenge treatment with it getting a slick retro beat-em-up game with an equally long title in Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Rita's Rewind. The game features 5 player co-op with both local and online modes. Looking at the gameplay trailer, it looks like we're in for a ton of unique gameplay from a roller coaster level to even transforming into the big Power Ranger robot for a boss fight. No release window was given, so go add this to your wishlist on Steam to keep up with the title. 
Finally, you want to lock in for this last SGF announcement because Tears of Metal was our best of show co-op game which we talked at length about during our Summer Game Fest list video so go check that out. But Tears of Metal. Yeah man, this game looks amazing. It's a 4 player online co-op hack and slash title featuring a great art style and almost like a Braveheart setting. Just looks like a ton of fun, the music sounds incredible and we're dying to hear more since it didn't get a release window just yet. But there's more. I want to give a quick shout out to this very cool skate game called Reckless, which was announced at the Guerrilla Collective. This is a skating game featuring 50 player lobbies and launching onto early access sometime in quarter three of this year. While not the typical co-op game we cover here on the channel, I just thought this looked cool and I love the idea of this giant skate social game. So go add this to your wish list. Hopefully this comes out while we wait for Skate Story or Skate. Only got two more showcases left, so let's talk about the biggest co-op announcement out of the Xbox Showcase, Gears of War E-Day. As someone that never played a Gears game, I'm actually super excited for this one as it's an origin story taking us back to where it all began for Marcus and Dom. I'm really stoked to have this ideal entry point into the franchise, and I hope we get a look at gameplay by the end of the year. Okay y'all, last two game announcements. First up is Phantom Line, which saw its debut at the PC gaming show. This is a 4 player co-op shooter set in a post nuclear European map with a whole lot of spooky paranormal stuff going on. So naturally very much up my alley. No release window was given, but they're starting to have a couple playtests on Steam so be sure to wishlist the title and join their discord if you're interested. Last announcement is for Stormforge which saw its worldwide debut at IGN Live and it's another game that we highlighted on our Summer Game Fest video. This is an 8 player online co-op open world survival title that looked pretty interesting to me. The art style is definitely a big highlight and even though we only got a brief 45 second look at the game, I think I saw enough to be excited. Between the different classes, environmental hazards, and the robust building system, that all sounds like the makings of a solid co-op game. Again, be sure to wish us the title as no release date was given. Alright guys, that's all from our utterly bloated June Monthly, where we try to keep it pretty short, but hopefully we still covered everything you were looking for, and you're leaving as excited as we are for the rest of the year and beyond. So be sure to hit that subscribe button, it would mean a ton. Also consider joining us over on Patreon. As I mentioned, we're really excited about everything going on over there. Plenty of awesome exclusive content for our patrons. Either way, we'll catch you next time on another episode of The Co-op Rose.